Hey guys, it's Wendy with Fab Crafts and More, and today I'm going to show you how to make a knockout tile sign. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Cricut Design Space, and we're going to start a new project. So I have pre-selected the fonts that I want to use. We need one large block font for the large last name, and we're going to use I Love Glitter for the middle names. If you don't already have I Love Glitter, you can go to defont.com and download that and install it and then bring that up in Design Space. If you're unsure about how to do that, you can go watch my video on how to download fonts and use them in Design Space. So I have chosen to use Times New Roman font, which is a very common font and installed on most computers automatically. And we're going to start by typing in my last name. And it's going to pop up in the default Cricut Sans font. I'm going to go up here to fonts, go into the search bar and type in times, which will give me the option to choose Times New Roman. And there it changed my font. And I've already pre-measured my sign and it's actually kind of a long sign. It's 23 and a half inches long and I'm gonna add some other things to it. So I've decided that my name needs to be about 17 inches long. So I could just drag in and out on the little arrow button there, but I can also go up here to size and type in 17 and enter, and it will make my name the 17 inches wide. Now, I'm going to come back to that in a second because I do wanna change the letter spacing a little bit. These letters are a little bit too far apart for my liking, and so I'm going to go to letter space and just start clicking and bringing those closer together. So, now my name is not 17 inches long anymore, it's 15.323, so I'm gonna go back and choose 17, and there we go. So now I'm going to go in and make a new text box. And I'm going to first choose the I Love Glitter font because as we type this, it has some extra little things that I want to see and make sure that we're hitting the right keys. So I'm going to search for glitter. This is the only font that has glitter in the name on my system. And I'm going to start typing. For the I Love Glitter font, for the front little swoosh that comes into the name, you're going to type the open bracket key. Then you'll type your first name. And then for the middle part, you can either use the underscore or the shift backslash key, and you can choose between this filled in heart or this open heart. I'm gonna stay with the open heart, and now I'm going to type in my husband's name and the close bracket key for the end swoosh. And I want to bring them closer, but before I do that, while my names are all one element, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna change the color because we're gonna be using that to help us be able to see better where we're placing things. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it 17 inches also. We'll have to change it again when we move everything together. And I'm going to zoom in and then start clicking on the letter space key and start bringing them closer together. Now, it won't work all the way on this font because some letters we need to scooch in a little bit more than others. So I'm gonna get it in where they just start to touch and then I'm going to go over here and choose ungroup so that I can move each letter individually. And I'm going to start bringing everything closer to the heart. So I'm gonna bring this name over in this direction and that actually lined it. I just used clicked on the letter and used my arrow keys and it lined it up pretty well. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more because one of the reasons I changed this to a color other than black is because then you get to see a black outline around the letter and you can see that it's matched up correctly. So I'm gonna click on the A, click the arrow keys and I actually like where that lined it up. Sometimes with the arrow keys, it'll move it too much or not enough. Like that one, it moved it too much. So I wanna move it over, but I wanna keep it in line with all the other letters. So I'm gonna hold the shift key down as I slide it back over. And the shift key will keep it going side to side or up and down in a linear fashion so that it doesn't get out of alignment with the rest of the letters. 
and I want to move this one just a little bit more. I'm holding down the shift key. There we go. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the letters over on this side. And let's bring that one over. That looks good. And that one over. Like so. And then the W. And I think that's a little too close. Sometimes when you bring these letters too close, when you end up welding them like we need to do, um, they'll fill in the middle of one of the letters next to them. So we can't get them too close. And I'm actually going to test that out right now. Now that I've got them moved the way I want them, I'm going to go ahead and just do a little test run on the welding. And I'm going to select all the letters and choose weld. And it did. It filled in this D right here. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. And I'm going to scoot in zoom in here one more time. I'm going to select these and just move them over a tiny bit. I'm going to zoom out and then we'll select everything. I'm going to make it bigger and then I'm going to push weld. And so now you can see Nothing is filled in and everything looks great. So before I weld it, what I want to do while all the letters are ungrouped is I want to duplicate this layer. And so I'm going to choose duplicate and I'm going to slide this down here. That way, after I weld this, if it messes up, I have another set of letters that I can work with. Because once you weld, you can't go back. So I'm going to go ahead now and weld these together. And then I'm going to choose this set down here. I'm going to group these letters together so that I can come up here and click on the group and hide that because I don't need to see that right now. All right, so everything is welded. And now we want to make this the same size as the other name. So I'm going to just type in 17 because that's what we did for the other one like so, and then let's zoom in a little bit so we can see well. And now I'm going to drag this up over the top of the last name. And this one, it's hard because I have five letters in this name and three letters in this name, so it's a little bit hard to find a good center on here. But we're just going to kind of stick it in there like so. Let's go ahead and just go with it right here. And I didn't, because this D comes up, I didn't want to cut into the E, so I'm just going to kind of leave that down a little bit lower like that. And that's going to look just fine. Okay, so now for the next part, we're going to create the knockout. We don't need to see the large last name right now, so I'm going to hide that by clicking the I over in the layers. And now what we want to do is we want to select this name. We can go over here and find where it's at in the layers. And it shows now because we welded it that this is the weld result. We need to turn this into a print element and not a cut element. So we're going to click on the little scissors. It's going to pull out the layer attributes. And we're going to go ahead and click print. Now. This is where we create the outline for the knockout. Now that we don't have anything else showing, we've hidden everything and we have this welded and we've turned it into a print element. We have to size it down to less than nine and a quarter inches wide because, so I'm just gonna choose nine, because when you go to make something on the print and cut, it won't accept anything larger than nine and a quarter by six and three quarters. So I've resized that down up here to nine inches and now we can go over to make it and this is where the magic happens. So here we are with our name on the mat. It's like it's going into a print and cut but we're not really going to print and cut. From here we're gonna click continue. It doesn't matter if you're not connecting to your machine or the printer. We're going to choose send to printer. And then what we want to make sure is that we turn this bleed on to where it shows green. So 
no green is off, green is on. And if you look over here, when I turn it on and off, if it's off, you just see the letters, and if it's on, you'll see the outline, okay? And that's what we want. Right from this screen, you can go over to the image, you can right click, and you can save your image. And you just wanna place it into an area where you know where it's at. And I'm just going to call this Knockout 2 and it saves it as a PNG, which is one of the file types that you can use in Design Space. So now that we've saved it, that's all we need to do here. We're not gonna print and we're not gonna cut, so we're just gonna close out of here. We're gonna click Cancel. It asks you if you're sure you wanna cancel. We're gonna choose Yes. And then we're back on the mat. So now what we wanna do is we want to choose our letters again. We want to turn, make them 17 inches, we want to go back down here to the layers and turn our other last name on and we're all still in the same area where we were. Now we need to go to upload and navigate to the image that we just saved. So you can browse or you can drag and drop. I'm going to go ahead and just go through and click it. From here you're going to want to choose simple because it's just two colors basically, continue, and I'm gonna zoom in here. Now, you could go through the cleanup options here in the select and erase with the wand or the eraser, but the easiest way for this is to choose the crop tool, come up right up close to the edge of that box, just inside of it, make sure you've selected all of the letters, and then let go and it'll crop it. Now, it looks weird, but that's how it's supposed to look to create the knockout. So now we're going to continue. It's saving it. We want to save it as a cut image. So we just click on that and push save. And now we can upload it into Design Space. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and we're going to insert that onto the canvas. Now it brings it in really small because I've sized my other letters pretty big. And so we need to size it the right way. And I'm also gonna do, first I'm gonna change the color. Again, so that when we're layering all of these, it's easier for us to see where everything is. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it with this little arrow right here. And as I rotate, I'm gonna hold the shift key down again. And as you do that, it allows you to rotate and it snaps it into place so that you get it right lined up straight. So now from here, we can drag it like this or we can just go up here and we had made the other name 17 inches so we're also gonna make this one 17 inches. And right now this one is over the top of everything and we want to be able to see the red over the top of that so we get it lined up correctly. So what we can do is we've, we're already selected on this yellow layer. We can go up to arrange and move backward. We don't wanna move it all the way to the back. We just wanna move it back two times. We can just work at lining these up. And what you wanna do is just get the red words lined up into the yellow area and if you need to, you can make the yellow area just a tad bit bigger than the red. And just make sure that you're clicking on the yellow one and just make it a tiny bit wider. Come over here and click on the lock and you can also make it a little bit longer. You can move it around like so. And so that is lined up pretty good. So basically what you want it to do is the yellow is going to slice out of the large last name and make the spot for the letters to sit. So we've got it all lined up and now we don't need to see the uh, red letters, which is actually this weld result, but I'm gonna hide that weld result. And now that we only have these two elements chosen, we're going to slice. If you need to know more about slice, you can go see my video about how to weld, slice, and attach images. 
And so now with two, these two elements selected, we're going to choose slice. And what we want to get rid of now is we can go up to the top here. We want to delete the yellow parts and then just use the eyeball to see which of the black layers we want to delete. And it looks like it's this one because that's where our letters are going to fit into. So we're going to go ahead and choose that and click delete. And then now we are going to go back to our red letters and turn those back on. And they're still sitting right in the spot where we left them. But now we've got our larger block letters and the script letters, and we're going to use the same color for both of these when we cut it. And it's all gonna cut out on one sheet of vinyl. In here, we don't need this group anymore, so we're gonna delete that. That was our duplicate, so we're gonna get rid of that. And we're going to change these letters back to black. And you just wanna make sure that you have space in between all of the letters so that the middle name is not touching against any of the other name. I've made this in black just because it's easier to see on the screen, but I'm going to cut it out in white. And then I'm going to add another text box for the established because I think that's really cute. And I'm going to do that in the I Love Glitter font. So we're there. And I'm going to bring that letter spacing closer together. And let's make that a little bit bigger so we can make sure that we're getting everything where it needs to be. I'm going to ungroup that and slide it over a little. Right, like so. Then we'll go ahead and move this over. I'm just going to kind of place it right down here. And then I'm going to open another text box. I want this to be Times New Roman. And I'm going to do that. My husband and I were married in 2005. I'm going to group that back together. And bring it up. We're ready to go to make it. We want to make sure that both of these are cut elements. So we're going to go into the layer attributes and make sure those are both changed to cut. We've got everything um, ready to go. From here, if we just go to make it, let's see what happens. Everything gets jumbled around. Okay, so we, I am going to cut it on a 12 by 24 mat because it is longer than the 12 inches. And but this is not going to be okay. So we're going to cancel and go back over here. Uh, first, I need to choose this down here, the EST, because it's a script font, and weld those together so that they will cut out a continuous line and not be separate letters. And then I'm actually going to choose everything and attach it. Now, we have the script fonts welded, so they'll cut out as one. And we've got everything attached, so when I go to make it, it should all line up on the mat as we see it on the screen. And there we go. So we can scroll up. You guys can see that everything is ready to go. We're going to be cutting out on one piece of white vinyl. Even though it's showing black, I'm going to do it on white because my tile is a dark tile. So I'm going to get everything ready to cut and assemble and we'll put it all together. All right, so I'm going to be cutting this um, on one of the large Cricut mats. And I'll take this off. And my design is just under 18 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and I have a roll of just the Cricut um, premium vinyl. This is um, not a permanent vinyl, but this sign is just going to be used indoors. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep it on the roll here and get it out here to about 18 inches. 
right about there. And I use my rotary cutter um, directly on my mat. I do it gently, um, but I'm just going to find the 18 inch mark, which is right about here. And then use my cutting guide here. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut right across there. You know, the Cricut cuts on the mat and I have found that it's so far worked for me just fine to cut my material to size right on the mat with my rotary cutter. Like I said, I don't do it hard. I do it gently. And now I'm going to get it ready to go into the machine. So I have my mat here all ready to go. And um, you can either wait until the Cricut tells you to load the mat or you can go ahead and get it ready and um, the Cricut is on and all you do is push the feed button. You want to make sure you're underneath the guides and that you're giving it a slight nudge. So I'm going to go ahead and push that and it will load the mat like so. And then we'll go to the computer and send over the instructions. Okay, so we are here at the mat and we're ready to make it. I've loaded up the uh, vinyl onto the 12 by 24 mat size. And over here, you are able to choose if you're doing um, 12 by 19 or 12 by 24. And so I'm gonna choose 12 by 24 because that's the size of the mat that I have in there. And um, I don't need to mirror because this is vinyl and not iron on transfer. And so now all we need to do is click continue. So it's telling me to make sure that I have the correct mat in. It's just reminding me that I'm larger than the 12 inch mat size and we're all ready to do that. So I'm going to click OK. We'll click continue. And it is now connecting through Bluetooth to my Cricut Maker. And now we get to choose the material. And I'm going to choose vinyl because it's just the regular Cricut vinyl. I have this set up as one of my favorites, so it pops up right away. But you can browse the materials if you need to. So on my Maker, I'm setting it to vinyl. And we are connected through the Bluetooth. And now I'm going to load my mat again because it unloaded it when it did the um, when it did the update. All right, so we are ready to cut, and I just set all the materials on the computer, and we are we've loaded the mat, and I'm going to push the flashing Cricut button, and it's going to cut for us. And I'm going to unload the mat. And it's kind of hard to see, but it's cut out all across here. And I'm going to get things set up to start weeding. All right, so we are ready to weed. And I don't know if you can see very well in here, but we've got it all cut out. And so now when I take this off the mat, I actually like to use my large scraper and it comes right up underneath there. And you can get a really good start like so. And then it's better to peel the mat off of your project so that it doesn't, and it's more of an issue with paper but even with the vinyl, sometimes it wants to curl your vinyl up and mess with it. So then I just sort of work my way along with the vinyl like that. And then we're ready to weed. So I have all my tools kind of all messy <laughs> in this bag, but um, I like to use the Cricut weeding tool to weed. Um, and I do have some other, um, the spatula and um, some other hooked weeding tools. Um, and that's really your preference of how you like to weed. I'm actually going to go ahead and cut along here 
um, to just make the material smaller that I have to deal with and then I'll start weeding. All right, so I just wanted to give you a couple tips on weeding. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit hard to get started, so you can even, um, on a spot where there's no design, you can sort of rip it away right there just to, to get underneath the paper, like so. And a lot of the times, these big pieces will just sort of come up. So you do wanna be careful because you don't wanna pull up on parts that you want to leave on the paper. So it's a little tricky sometimes, especially with white, to see kind of what's going on, but just pay attention to where your cuts are and watch while you're um, weeding just to make sure you're not leaving back any, like the dots of eyes or um, like right here, there's gonna be a small, dot that's next to the um, EST for established, but this regular Cricut vinyl weeds pretty easily. And so we're really gonna get most of what we need to come off like so. So I'm gonna kind of look through here and make sure that there's, okay, the dot for the J is there, that little dot's there, so we're good. All right, and so then Sometimes even come in and grab some pieces with your fingers. This is pretty large, so it's not super hard to weed. Like so. And then we'll just get out the little heart here. All right, so I'm gonna finish getting this weeded. Okay, so I've cut my transfer tape the same size as my design, and this is the transfer tape magic cover, clear, transparent. Um, it's like contact paper. This is from the dollar store. It's kind of what a lot of people like, and so we're just gonna peel it away, and again, I'm just gonna sort of rip it right here so I can get underneath there. And the way I wanna do this is I'm going to fold back a little piece of the paper like so. And I'm going to get that positioned as nicely as I can onto the edges of the paper here. I wanna make sure that it's fairly straight because as I pull this out, I want it to stay straight against there. So once I have a small portion on there, I can reach under here and I can start pulling away and it's kind of, unruly because it's been rolled up so it kind of wants to roll but I can pull away the liner and push it down nicely I can even use my scraper and sort of push down as I go now we have it on here I'm going to take my scraper and I'm really going to push that transfer tapes and you can do it from both the front and the back okay and then people kind of want to just start to peel this up from um, the front but what I like to do and what works really well especially if you're having a little bit of a hard time getting um, the vinyl to stick to the transfer is to go ahead and um, turn it over and start at an angle and actually peel away the backing from the vinyl. And it will, okay, that's a little tiny part. So once you kind of get started here, sometimes you have to help it a little bit. So you just sort of help it along, but you start peeling away this back side away from the vinyl, okay? Now, this um, dollar store contact paper is not quite as sticky, which sometimes I like and sometimes I don't. Um, but one thing I do like about it, and you kind of don't want to get your fingers all over the back of your vinyl because it'll get oils on there and then it won't stick as well. Um, so you can just kind of use a spatula or something to if this doesn't want to go right away. 
Okay. Okay, so I've got it all weeded and I put a little bit of the transfer tape on because it's easier to deal with when not everything is sticking. And we want to take some rubbing alcohol, not very much, just a little on a lint-free cloth and just rub that on there to get rid of any oils. I believe I got it at Home Depot and who knows who's been touching it. I do have, um, I'm going to have this jute wrapped around there. Um, I actually got enough jute for free at the craft store where I bought a Tim Holtz um, stamping platform and it was in a bundle and they had that all wrapped around it. So that part was actually free. And I think these tiles are... I'll have to look again and I'll post it down below, but um, they're super cheap. I want to say it was like $3. It may have been 5 but I don't think it was much more than that. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to place this on here, okay? Um, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could get some masking tape and tape a straight line across here. I'm going to sort of just eyeball it because that's kind of how I roll. And we do have a fairly straight edge. Um, up there and then you want to be careful too if you have something like the jute here that you don't get a bunch of lint and stuff underneath there so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come here and I'm just gonna gently place it down right now just in case when I look at it it looks totally crooked but again you can just peel away as you go like so And I am good with that. So I'm going to just place it on like that. I'm going to take a look at it up here. Okay. It's not perfectly straight, but you know what? I'm totally good with that. All right. Then I'm going to get my scraper. And I'm just going to go along with the scraper here and just look for any air bubbles and just sort of scrape and push that down and if I see any spots where it looks like there's some air bubbles I'll just push those out this tile is a little bit of a um, it's not a totally smooth surface it's pretty smooth but it should stick just fine All right, and then you'll just take your transfer paper and you're going to want to just go slowly so that you're making sure everything's sticking. And it already didn't really want to stick to the transfer tape, so it should just stay on. And just pull gently. And there we go. So now you notice this kind of pulled up a little bit. You can just take your scraper and gently go over these areas. Now I did not use the permanent outdoor vinyl or what um, people call 651 which is a brand called Oracle and their permanent vinyl is 651 because this is not going to go outside. This is going to stay inside it's not going to see the weather. People aren't going to be playing with it or touching it. And this vinyl is going to be perfectly fine and will hold up really well. There you go. There is our knockout tile. I am going to do some more embellishments and that will be another video because I'm going to decorate it with felt flowers. I chose to do this on the ceramic tile, but you could do it on wood or metal or whatever material you wanted to. I'm going to decorate it with the felt flowers. If you have any questions about how we accomplished this or if you're having trouble with um, 
welding or slicing if you need to do that you can go see my video on how to weld and slice thank you for watching leave a comment below if you have any questions please subscribe to my channel and take a look at my other videos have a great day